Okay, so I'm going to save my work now because I just outputted each frame with the backgrounds as an individual JPEG. And I actually have 13 frames when you add in all the tweens. And they're all in my downloads folder because I saved them from PhotoP, right? So they start here, they go through to there. And so it's the last one is 12 because the first one doesn't have a number after the original file name. So what I'm going to do is make sure that I have that folder open. And I'm going to organize those frames into a new folder in my assignment 5. And I'm going to call these final. Right? So in my final frames folder, I'm going to take, starting with the first JPEG. Well, let's see if we can get them going by name. There we go. So actually, this is the first one. I'm going to rename it with a zero at the end. So that one goes into final frames. And then all these JPEGs. I'll go in. And then my, my most recent PSD with the background turned on, that's the PSD I want to save. Okay, now these final frames, that's what I want to bring into gifmaker.me. So I'm done with photo P for the moment. I'm going to open a new tab. You can find it in the instructions, gifmaker.me. You can just go there directly. I'm going to upload images. I'm going to go from my final frames. Very helpful to organize it into a folder. And I start with this one, right? The one zero, and now I want to upload the rest, just so I can do them hopefully in sequence, so I don't have to move them around. But once they're in GIFMaker, you can move your frames around if they get out of sequence. And they appear to have come in in sequence, which is great. So looking down your, your frames should be a lot like looking at um, a strip of film from a movie projector, right? And you can see here, it will start playing through. But the problem is it's playing through, but then it just jumps right to the beginning. And I want it to go forward and then backwards. That was my plan. Oh, and then you see another thing. Darn it. You see how the flames in the background aren't changing at all. even though I took all the time to, huh, that is baffling. But that's going to be okay for now. You know, maybe, maybe I can fix that in my resubmission. And I think it might be because I had it set on overlay, and maybe they were all just adding up on each other. I don't know. That's going to take more, more insight than I can think of right now. Okay, now... I want to add in these frames again, but in reverse order. All right. So you can keep adding. Someone asked how you can take them off, and I actually am not sure. I haven't tried that. But if you can add them, you should be able to take them away as well, or just start over. But I'm first going to add all of those, because in GIFMaker, every frame has to take the same amount of time. In, in Photoshop, using the timeline window, you can actually set an individual timing for each frame for how long it plays. But in these freeware tools, 
we need to create all of the frames in an equal frame rate. So now you see it, it stays a little bit longer at the end because that's two frames that are identical. And then I want to add just one more that's at the very beginning. So it takes a little bit longer at the beginning. So as it changes direction. And then I can try speeding it up a little bit. Looking at in the preview, that looks pretty good. It's definitely transforming, right? Okay. And then I say create GIF animation. It says, please wait a moment. It's processing it, processing it, processing it. We're doing it at 100 uh, scale. So you don't want to increase it because that's going to soften everything. And because we're doing 8 by 8 inches at 72 pixels per inch, it should be 576 pixels by 576 pixels. Then you have to click on download the GIF. Okay, while that's downloading, there was a question. Yeah, um, what speed would you recommend we put it on? So that's what's so handy and why I like GIFmaker.me is it gives you this little preview. The, the speed you should choose is what you think looks best in the preview. Okay, all right. The way I, I tend to always animate, I always do about three frames a second. Okay. So that's, right. that's 300 milliseconds per frame or 333 milliseconds per frame. Okay, that makes sense. And I wonder if you can actually type that in. Yeah, so you can get a precise number. And actually, since that's what I'm used to, three frames per second, I might output another one. So you can, you can try some different ones and download them. So now I have two. It's going to come to downloads. It's not going to have a specific name, right? So then you need to save it to your folder and give it your name. So this is going to be, all right. Now to test it, I'm going to open it with a web browser. And for some reason, I always feel bad for Safari. I never use Safari for anything. So I use it to test my animations. And there it is. It seems a little abrupt at the end. I think I should add a tween to the end. And I think I should get all the flames to move. So those will be the the improvements I make to it, right? But those are improvements to the animation itself. Now what you see on your screen right now, this is a lot like a refined storyboard. So if we go to the assignment, we have to learn how to do that. Because what we want for this is now something that looks like this that takes nine of our frames from our animation, no matter how many individual frames we have, and puts them in a nice grid that shows our transformation. So what I do is I go back to Photopea. And I open up the PSD that's the most recent, right? The same thing I would open up in order to keep working on it to fix things. My grumpy Gus. And it's hopefully clear how I would make the changes that I said I needed to make. You know, make sure that the fire is different each time. And I'll, I'll work on that um, for right now and how I can add a frame between nine and eight because that just, in the animation, here it doesn't look too strong, but in the animation, it looked like too big a jump to me. And sometimes you can only see the, the need for a tween once you animate. But right now, I'm going to find what I think should be my middle frame. So this is my middle frame. And I'm going to right click next to the eyeball and mark that red. 
Oh, wait, I'm in Photoshop. Sorry, you can't do that in Photo P. Let me open it in Photo P. Sorry about that. They look so similar, it fooled me. Here we go. <laughs> so you want to find the, the frame you want to appear in the middle of your refined storyboard. And for me, that's frame five. I'm going to use only my keyframe, so I already have the nine chosen. Now I'm going to crop right to the edges. It should stick to the edge of my eight by eight box. And I can use guides if I need to. And that's to crop out any extra stuff. And now, let's see. I'm going to keep the background as white. And I'm going to use my guides and build a box around this image. So the only thing that's difficult about this, and I'm sure you'll have some questions, and hopefully you can refer to this video, is that Photoshop is not a, or Photo P or, and Photoshop are not good layout programs. That's what InDesign is for. But we're not a graphic design class. We're not learning InDesign right now. So we're going to use what we can in terms of layout. I know I want this to be dead center. So I crop around it. I make sure there's no extra stuff outside of those boundaries. I put the guides around it. And that's eight by eight inches by 72 pixels per inch. And now I'm gonna grow the canvas size. And I want the canvas size in inches to be 30 inches wide by 40 inches tall. So these are familiar proportions for us. And I want it to anchor to the middle and have relative unchecked. Now I can zoom out and I see that I have a lot of space for my refined storyboard. I'm going to go to my background layer and I'm just going to say edit fill with white. So I'm not confused by the checkerboard anymore and I can see my guides clearly. Now I'm going to view not just the guides, but the grid. And the shortcut for that is command uh, apostrophe on a Mac or control apostrophe on a PC, right? I want to see that grid, which unfortunately in Photo P breaks it up by centimeters instead of inches. And I want to move the exact same amount from each side of my frame. So I'm going to go two and a half boxes on the grid. It's two and a half centimeters. On all sides. So I'm putting a new guide there. So this is so I can lay it out equally because you don't want it to look sloppy. You want there to be even spacing. In a comic book, this is called the gutter between the panels. So you see that? I have even spacing. Now I can turn off the grid under the view options or using command apostrophe or control apostrophe if you're on a PC. And now I have a little nest for each of my frames. So I'm going to take frame one and I'm going to auto select it, all of frame one not auto-selected, sorry, and just drag that up. I might need to merge it first because I have lots of things in that folder, so I've merged it. Now I can drag that. Darn it, I need a background too. <laughs> so I need to merge them with the backgrounds. Photoshop makes this much easier. Let's make lots of copies of the background. Keep up with me. OK, good. So I have lots of copies of the background now. So I can merge them with the layers. Because they all have to move. Come on. And so I'll finish this with the next video.